King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Everybody, welcome to Fighting Spirit Unleashed Night 4. This is the big one, Alex. This is the week we've all been waiting for here on New Japan Strong. It's Ian Riccoboni, Alex Kozlov. I'm getting so ahead of myself because the main event is so gigantic. It's so huge. Fred Rosser, the strong open weight champion, defending his title against TJP in a clash that we've been waiting for. Rosser wants to be the most fighting defending champion Strong has ever seen. But TJP has designs on winning that title. Absolutely. And look, both of these men have a lot of experience. and have been doing this a long time. And both of these men are very passionate about being students of the game. And so this will be very competitive. And TJP has a really good chance. He usually has an answer for everything. You know that he does his homework. And so this will be a tough challenge. Well... I'm most excited because we've seen Fred Rosser take on a brawler like Big Damo. We've seen him take on Fred Yehai, a technical master. TJP has that hybrid style, that high flying, that technician style. So I'm excited to see what kind of wrinkles Fred Rosser has for TJP. It's going to be a chess match with the title on the line in our main event. We will also see a huge debut here on New Japan Strong. Che Cabrera taking on the factory's Aaron Solo. I. I'm hoping QT Marshall is going to be around. Why would you wish that upon us? I smell, I smell jealousy. Doesn't smell very good. Our opening contest is a huge tag team bout. We will see LA Dojo members Kevin Knight and the DKC. They will take on Barrett Brown and Bateman of the Stray Dog Army. And this has huge implications for the Strong Openweight Tag Team Championship. And as, as we know from High Alert back in Charlotte, DKC, Kevin Knight, they picked up a win against the Heat Seekers, former NWA Tag Team Champions. How about that? If they win here, it's two in a row. If you get to three in a row, maybe you start to get whispers about the title shot, Alex. Absolutely. DKC, Kevin Knight. Imagine them becoming formidable challengers to the strong Openweight Tag Team Championship. I mean, they look good. They looked amazing against the Heat Seekers. Way more experience. Imagine if they picked up the win tonight. Could be lightning in a bottle, but I would never discount Bateman. He's a man who's been in the game for almost two decades now, one of the most crafty wrestlers, and he's got Barrett Brown right where he wants him as his tag team partner. Should be a heck of an encounter that'll kick things off right now, the final night of the Fighting Spirit Unleashed Tour. The final night of the Fighting Spirit Unleashed Tour. Ian Riccoboni, Alex Kozlov, and we're joined by the Wild Rhino, Clark Common. Clark, you're on your feet, as are the fans here in Hollywood. You're gosh darn right I am. There they are. They're my boys right there. Second class LA Dojo ready to rock today. Toward Japan, DKC back in the States. And Kevin Knight, last time we were in this building, Kozlov, he was in the main event teaming with Tanahashi and Fred Rosser. But last time on Strong, these two men picked up a huge win against the Heat Seekers. Unbelievable role that these guys are on. And what timing, because now with the Strong Openweight Tag Team Championships, any team that gets hot, it is such a new division, any team that gets hot can find themselves in title contention. That's right, uh, finally these tag teams have a purpose, have a reason to be here. The strong Openweight Tag Team Championship, which are held by Ozzy Open. It's the reason for the season, Alex, you know what I mean? Like, Stray Dog Army's been here for a long time, they found something to do, and I'm very excited to see them lose tonight to my boys, wow. DKC. And the shots here. Clark Connors out the booth. 
with myself, Imre Gabani, and Alex Kozlov. This is a heck of an encounter. This is a long-standing issue. It's involved Fred Gay. Hi. Start the oh, match. No. Come on. Stray Dog Army not wasting any time. All right. Come on, Kev. And Bateman, as you were saying, Clark, takes Kevin Knight to the floor. You, you had some observations about Bateman. I did. You know, in the ring with him, you know, I, uh, he, uh, he smells worse than he looks. I'll tell you that much. Well, and uh, I don't want to be on the receiving end of one of those traps. Ooh. And Barrett Brown now with DKC. DKC, who's been in the ring with. A number of great stars like Okada, Ishii, Shingo, Sonata, and Naito in his first tour of Japan. But uh, he, he really showed off out there. He did a really good job. He, uh, he took a lot of pit. Oh, my goodness. Oh. These stray dog guys are nuts. No, but he took a lot of pins out there, but you know what? He grew from it, and I think that he's uh, coming in with some experience, and him and Kevin will put something on. Well, that's what's been so exciting about the DKC is you've seen his growth of just the physique, Alex, that's coming together, the in-ring footwork, the agility, the speed. Every time we see DKC, he gets better and better, and I think that's what led to their big win against the Heat Seekers. No, yeah. and like, you can, sorry, I cut off right, right in there. I'm not new to this, uh, this commentary thing. No, 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 that's okay. Uh, clearly, you are supporting your friends here at the LA Dojo. Uh, how about your uh, former mentor, TJP, in the main event tonight, challenging for the strong open oh. championship? I'm going to tell you this much. I want Fred Rosser to give him everything that I did, and I gave him a lot. I beat the holy heck out of that guy. But Fred Rosser, I know, will do the rest for me. Tag made, Barrett Brown. And this is where Stray Dog Army is so dangerous. You know, the LA Dojo, Clark, you can speak to it better than anybody. I mean, they day in and day out. Oof. DKC and Kevin Knight training together, living together. They are a, a functional unit in and out of the ring, but there's something dangerous about Stray Dog Army. Yeah, no, honestly, they uh, they got something together, especially cheese Louise. Honestly, the two of them, like Mysterioso is great now, but when, when Barrett gets in there with, uh, with, with Bateman, something comes out in him, it's different, it's dangerous, it's disgusting, and I think that that makes this combination so dangerous. Irish whip off the roll. Oh, oh. line, sending DKC down. Cover here, one, two. Come on, DK! Just a two count there, and it was if you remember, it was about 18 months ago, Barrett Brown turned his back on Adrian Quest. He turned his back on all the LA Dojo and, and joined up with Bateman. There was some sort of hypnotic spell that Bateman has put he and Mysterioso under. I would call it more of a hypnotic smell. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, no, he really gets under your skin when he's out there. He's, uh, he's got an, an ability to just make you feel like, you know, you're part of something or Vividly against something, wow. Oh. Yeah, I look on. at Bateman, cover one, Come on. two, and Bateman will get inside your head with covers like that. Alex. Absolutely, very hard to predict. Innovating offense. Well, really very two, dangerous. With two decades in wrestling, Alex, Bateman is somebody deceptively big, six foot three, over 240 pounds, and he can, he can manhandle you like this. Oh, oh. 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 oh tag me! Oh yeah, coming in hot, let's go. Kevin Knight, shoulder tackle on Barrett Brown. Chopping Bateman down. Yes. And nobody home for Barrett Brown. Kevin Knight with the agility. As explosive as a jet. He really is. Oh, on, looking to pick up Bateman. That's that size we, we alluded to. Bateman, just a little too big, a little too strong for Knight. Oh, what a forearm. And it's Bateman off the rolls. It's Kevin Knight! Picks him up! Gets him up! Let's go! Twisting frog splash! <laughs> Look at the athleticism on this guy. He's a freak of nature. What an athlete, Kevin Knight looking for the Boston Crab! This works every time. The fingers on, are Kevin. locked! Come on, Kevin. The fingers are locked! Can he get him over? If he can lock it in, Bateman. Oh, and smartly, he knew the end may have been yep. near. I've had that with Bateman before. I've, I've tried to put a Boston Crab on him. He's got really strong inner leg muscles. Oh, inner leg muscles. And Bateman wrapping around. Oh, sends him down. Twisting, back suplex. Cover, one, two. 
nothing wrong with that. The lateral press, that shows the will that Kevin Knight has to kick out. Yeah, but that, uh, that slam that he just took is so disorienting. The way that Bateman turned him in the air before dropping him. Yeah, you know that Alex is like, when you take a slam like that, sometimes you use what you wake up from it real quick and you don't know where you are in the ring. And right now, Kevin Knight is in trouble. It's two versus one. DKC is nowhere to be seen. Ooh. Sending Kevin Knight back to the corner. And keeping him in the corner of the Stray Dog Army, the ring firmly cut off onto the lion mark. Oh, and look at that. Controlling traffic, it's Bateman. Barrett Brown shooting the half, hooks the leg. Two. Just a two count there. Well, that's the thing about the LA Dojo boys, yeah. and I'm sure Clark, you know, I mean, they teach you that fighting spirit. You know, never give up. As long as you have anything in you. No, you honestly, I'm, I'm having anxiety just watching this. I just want, you know, because I know he's going to kick out because I just know that it's that fighting spirit in him. But, uh, oh, man, it's hurting. It's hurting to watch. I don't like him getting hit. Kevin Knight now in the wrong part of town. Bear Brown focusing on that neck, which we know Bear Brown, he can hit you with the lariat and also Bateman with the this is a kill, that giant move. That will just make the vertebrae. Oh, crackle. Ooh. Oh, now right to the throat, the neck. Clearly frustrated. See, Barrett, when I'm in the ring with him, he, he loses his temper and it, and it becomes this different person. And it, uh, it can be a good thing or bad thing for him. I've seen it go out of hand in the wrong way, which actually sometimes it works out for the better. So it works, good. absolutely. And yeah. ever since his alliance with uh, Bateman, he's been able to channel that energy more effectively, no doubt about it. Without a doubt, yeah. No, he's become a better overall wrestler. Oh, oh and Bateman planning night, night blocks. Oh, oh. through, makes the tag. The DKC and Bear Brown ducks the clothesline. DK fire. Oh, wow. Bring it, DK. Forearm connects though, Barrett Brown. Swing and a miss. Thrust kick to the midsection. DKC. That's new, I haven't seen that one yet. Hooks the oh, leg, like two. Two count there. DK fire, baby, come on. Calling for it here. And Brown is trapped and unloading with the DK fire. Right to the eyes, oh, Barrett Brown. Get the, oh, the, the face of DKC happened to be uh, oh, stuck to the hand of Barrett, of Barrett Brown. Oh, oh right. come on, hey, Kozlov. Hey, Bonnie, what's going on here? Oh, no. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. sky high, double IPA dro uh, drop kick. Oh, double kick caught. <laughs> wow, big knee under the jaw. And babe, it's so oh, dangerous. Jeez oh, Louise. Snap brain buster. Wait a second, watch out, wait watch a out. second. He's flying. Barrett Brown right by DKC. No, no, no. Waist lock, standing switch. Oh. Big back elbow. Another standing switch here. Swing and a miss. Ducks down, sunset flip. Has him one, two. Mm. Two count there, hanging on. He's got him in yes. a submission. Submission yes. locked in. Yes. Traps oh, him, no, no, no. two. Oh. oh my God. Transition, transition into it. Oh, but it's in a fireman's carry position now. Bear Brown, oh, the aggressor. No. Submission lock, but no he's way. trapped. Oh! Who's the next driver? Two! Two. Oh. Yes. Let's go! Got him! Let's go! Picking up the victory once again. Man, they are on the roll as Clark Connors cheering them on. The Wild Rhino Clark Connors in celebration. We know he's recovering. We wish you the best of luck, Clark. We hope to see you in Vegas. I don't like that guy. But hey, there's a story right now. Two in a row for the DKC at Kevin Knight. And with this tag team division formulating, you got to think they have put themselves firmly in the driver's seat to be the number one contenders, Alex. An exciting debut here on New Japan.
Japan Strong coming our way right now. On week four, final week of the Fighting Spirit on Leash Tour. But what a golden opportunity for this man. Just to run in the same circles as bad dude Tito. Out here today looking to make his own mark like Tito did here at New Japan Strong. Well, uh, you know, he's been doing this for uh, 10 years, and finally the opportunity has arrived for Latino meat. The lights are on you. Excuse me? Can, you, can we say that on New Japan Strong? It's just Latino meat. Ain't nothing to it. But we've seen what a launching pad New Japan Strong could be. I mean, think back to bad dude Tito, man. That was one of the best kept secrets in the independence. It led to a tour of Japan for nearly a month long. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I was just, I was oh. wondering if we were going to see Cutie Marshall. And here he is. Oh, why? Why? It's Aaron Solo versus Che Cabrera. Why? Why would QT need to be out for this match? Because QT is obviously the, the mentor. He, he is he is the mentor. He is the factory. The purveyor of the Nightmare Factory Gym and Training School. You know, Aaron Solo was such a nice young man. He was one of the Jushin Liger's last tag team partners before Liger retired. He had a a pretty good record in New Japan in Australia and in the United States. But QT promised him the world, and, and, and to QT's credit, he's delivered. Bring him into the factory. Aaron Solo, by his own admission, was a was a 500 level wrestler, meaning he won the same amount as he lost. And since running up with QT, he, his record has improved. So we'll see what happens here. Attacking Jay Cabrera. Getting a head start. Yes, that's right. Attacking him from behind, and maybe it's a good strategy because if you look at the physique of Shea Cabrera, oh, the Latino together. meat, he's got some meat on him. Definitely put together. And we're looking for the Irish whip here. Aaron Solo and the factory have had their differences with the LA Dojo. Irish whip. Shea Cabrera ducks under to Solo, but Cabrera finds him. Look at the power. Cabrera has him up. Oh, my God. And oh. nowhere to go. For Aaron Solo. That's some incredible strength. Like we said, New Japan Strong has been a launching point for many careers. It's been a feather in the cap of the factory. Oh. As Che Cabrera oh, oh, man. sending Solo down. I would not want to be on the receiving end of that lariat. Solo retreating to the outside for guidance from QT Marshall. And the factory has been successful. They picked up that big win in Chicago against the LA Dojo on pay-per-view. They've had their differences with men like Kevin Knight, the DKC. But, oh, wow, about around that. the neck. Just luring him in, catching him. And Cabrera right in front of QT Marshall with his prize pupil. Solo able to get out of it, but sweeping the leg and sending Solo down. I gotta say, so far in the in these first four or five minutes, uh, I mean, Shea Cabrera has been very dominant. Oh, oh man! But he's had to have eyes in the back of his head. And I've always said, if you have a manager, if you have a valet, if you have a second, you have an advantage that cannot be overstated. I mean, look at what QT was just able to do right there as Aaron Solo distracts the referee. going to be progressively more difficult as the match goes on because every time ooh, if Jay gets the advantage he's going to need to fight two people here Alex. Well, I mean look uh, I don't expect uh, uh, Marshall to be getting involved too much. Here. What? He's just uh, he's here for support. You've seen all the matches I have Alex. You know that he's not just out there for moral support. We saw it just now. Did the referee see it? No, but that doesn't make it morally. I see what the referee says. That doesn't make it morally correct. That doesn't make it 
You see what the referee sees. You see what's on the monitor. Forearms connect here. Aaron Solo, knee to the midsection. Front face lock here from Aaron Solo. And look at the snap of over. He does. Beautiful. Pushing through the hips there. And the tide of the match has changed just like that. Certainly has. As it's Solo. Back in control in no small part due to QT Marshall. Let's see what the referee sees. Jeez. Ooh. Forearm connects. And again, and again. Oh, come on. I think Shea Cabrera just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Cover here, one. And, and to me, it's not as much QT Marshall, great right hand. But to me, it's not as much the right hand he delivered. It's the mental, it, it's the mental unease, the mental anxiety. Ooh, oh, that QT beautiful. puts his opponents under. One, two. When he's out there with Camarado or Solo or Agogo, when he's out there with any member of the factory, it's that idea that he might interfere, that he might throw a punch. Like I said, uh, you know, I don't expect uh, QT Marshall to be involved uh, oh, predominantly. Come on. It's, it's minimal, it's minimal. Minimal, you just, are you gonna accuse me of being jealous of him again? Well, I mean, I certainly smell it on you. I mean, he was a better high school baseball player than you. I, did, I played in college. Yeah, but he's an athlete, a professional athlete. Are you, are you a professional athlete? Point taken as Solo connects. Can't take that away in Solo. And Shea oh. Cabrera are certainly great professional athletes. Shoulder tackle sends Solo down. That was some leaping capability by Shea Cabrera. I got to say, I mean, he was discovered at the LA Dojo camp, and he is very impressive, despite the obstacles. Oh, big clothesline. So you're admitting now, you're admitting on the record that he's fought through obstacles, a.k.a. QT Marshall, in this battle against Aaron Solo. Every opponent, every rival experienced obstacles in that ring. You never know what you're going to get. Nobody home, up that. and over. The agility from Kamara. Oh, God. Pushing is through the hips. Very impressive. What a physical and athletic specimen that he is. And it's Cabrera. Oh, collapsing Solo. I think right now is the time that we need a little support for, from QT Marshall. Solo needs some kind of support. He's in a bad way. At least once. At least, what? It's already been twice. Off the ropes. Oh. Sends him down the elevator. Cover here. One, two, lateral press. Just a two count. And Cabrera giving it everything he's got right now. Aaron Solo in a bad way. What a great debut for Cabrera here on the final night of the final Fighting Spirit Unleashed Tour. Charging in big boot there. Solo connects with the standing in Tagiri. Ducks the clothesline. Thrust kick in the midsection. Solo. Sunset oh. bomb. Sunset bomb. And the whiplash effect of that is not pretty. Aaron Saul going to the top. They're going to fly. Oh. Plants a double stop, hooks the leg. Two. How about that? Wow. Just Shea Cabrera in, kicks out of that. Just in the nick of time. And the tide has turned, though, back into the factory. Aaron Solo's column here. But he needs to make a move because Cabrera, we see this great stamina, we see this great strength. He needs to try, some, needs to try to put him away here. Solo, half Nelson, elbows out of it. Solo charging in, up and over. Wow, forearm. Oh, Ooh, look at the slingshot himself, caught. Has him draped. And Suplex there, hooks the leg. Two. Two. Oh, oh man. kicking out. Out the back door with the shoulder for Aaron Solo. And Cabrera on the doorstep of a victory here in his new Japan Strong debut. And you got to give it, give it up to Aaron Solo. He uh, Cabrera thought that he had it in the back right there. Aaron Solo has got the fighting spirit. 
I thought he did as well. And you gotta wonder if Cabrera's gonna pull out that finishing move. See if he can put Sol away. Fisherman caught. It's the cradle one, two. Just a two count there. Oh, rolls him up. One, two. Doesn't quite stack him the way he wanted. Solo finding a way out. Catches the clothesline. Looking for a backslide here. One, two. Caught. Pushing up and out. Ducks the clothesline. Solo swinging a miss. And it's Cabrera rolling through into the ropes. The caught. Two. He, no. No. I mean, the referee missed it. I mean, even I saw it. Oh, so now you see something that's different than the referee. I mean, I happen to see her in solo. Uh... That was a great counter to the pinning combination. That's right. It was, a, it, was a, it was a great counter. It was a great counter, but his hand was on the ropes. Pinning Jay Cabrera. And you know, there's part of me that says, OK, he, he cheated to win that bout. There's another part of me that almost admires the craftiness. And that's what you got to watch out for with this factory. The factory literally doing whatever it takes, whenever it takes them to win matches. And I think all the power to them. I, at the end of the day, the winner of the match gets more money than the loser of the match. That is a victory for Aaron Solo here. Week after week, main event after main event, and victory after victory. Ren Narita's successful excursion here on New Japan Strong continues. And next week will be no different as Ren Narita will challenge Juice Robinson at Autumn Action. We caught up with Ren for some comments ahead of this huge clash. Hey, Juice Namunats. Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, Papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. Pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection.
once and I'll say it again. I want to be a fighting champion. It's time to go to work with the New Japan Strong, the Trailblazer, the Suntan Superman, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser. As if, got it! Sidewinder hooks the leg, one, two, got her! Will the Empire extend its reach here tonight? It's got a good ring to it. It's up strong. But they are fighting a man who fights for almost everybody but himself. One of the most selfless wrestlers you will ever meet. He's the people's champion of New Japan Straw. Defeating Tom Lawler after chasing the championship for over a year, making him submit in Philadelphia. Two successful title defenses under his belt. Big Damo and Fred Yeha. We will see if he can make it three for three here tonight. They say the road to the championship is hard. Staying on top of the mountain is harder. And Rosser is living that reality right now. History making, barrier breaking, Fred Rosser. We've talked about what it means to the communities he belongs to, the first openly LGBTQ athlete to hold a championship in New Japan. First African-American athlete to hold the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship as well. Like we said, he is an inspiration. Taking that championship back to Union County, New Jersey. It's a, it's a great prelude. Uh, did he pay you to say all these things? And you know, Fred is a man who can be admired by everybody. And I think that's why he is an everyman. He is the people's champion here on New Japan Strong. Not taking away from anything from TJP. And in fact, I'm going to shock you here. I think TJP has an actual advantage in this championship bout. Fred Rosser has faced a lot of people. He's faced brawlers and strikers like Big Demo. He's faced technical wizards like Fred Yehai. He has faced Hikaleo in the past. He has not faced anybody who blends technical wrestling and high flying like TJP does. That's so right. I think TJP actually has an opening. You see the double leg there. That's right. You make a good observation. TJP is capable of it all. He's very, very versatile. He can grapple. He can. He's a high flyer. He knows how to use that ring to his advantage. He's good at the submission game. Look at that oh. takeover. Into the headlock there. The head scissor. He's got the speed advantage over Fred Rosser, and he can wear Fred Rosser out. We know from time to time Fred Rosser will pop into the LA Dojo, and like we said with Yehai, it, it's 
I don't want to take anything away from Yeha, but it's easy to prepare for a man who maybe only has one dimension or maybe two dimensions. TJP is a three, four dimensional wrestler, especially with the experience he has. You know better than anybody, Alex, you trained with this man at the original LA Dojo, that from a, a teenage years, this man has been a student of the game and has absorbed everything. Absolutely, a true student of the game. He knows it all, he's constantly learning. He is a man also that doesn't take any days off, if we're gonna talk about that. And that is why he's the current uh, uh, IWGP Junior Tag Team Champion. And that's why he has a really good opportunity here and he could become the champion tonight. And, and you see, as the footwork, the, the feeling out process, a waist lock here, the look in the eyes of Fred Rosser tells me that he doesn't quite know what to make of TJP. There was a different confidence he had with Big Damo. There was a different confidence ooh, that he had with Yehi. And that moves like this weren't in their repertoire. And that's Lucha Libre right there. Uh, as we've talked about, TJP is uh, well-versed in every style. He spent time in Mexico, everywhere around the world. And, and Rosser has a, a couple key decisions he can make here with the head scissors. He can try and outpower him, but TJP could essentially olay him like a charging bull at that point. That's right. He could try to out-wrestle him, but TJP might have that blocked as well with his experience, as you see here. Using the headstand to try and get out of the head scissor. Trying to pull his neck out, and there he goes. A little bit of mind games here. Ooh. Fred Rosser not happy with it. Changing slaps here to the face. And going for side headlock again. A smart move by TJP because he knows that if he loses his cool, the match certainly goes in the comma for oh, Rosser. Wow, and look, look at that. Going for an octopus stretch here. Rosser trying to duck down and block it. He's got it neutralized thus far. Waist lock here. That is going to be one of Rosser's advantages, his size. Some of the moves TJP tries to put on, like the octopus stretch there. It won't be so easy. Right. Ooh. Not going to have the same impact as if he was facing somebody in, say, junior tag team competition. Ooh. Charging, blocks the right, delivers one of his own. Rosser. Oh, on the apron, front face lock, the choke. In the ropes. And that's a smart move by TJP because he, he's in the ropes. Trapped. Wow. Tarantula. So you can you can be more you can have more power as in the case of Fred Rosser, but but if you don't have the win, then you you won't be able to do anything. And right now, what TJP is doing is uh, being more evasive. He's quicker and he's wearing Fred Rosser down. And, and let's be real too, TJP getting his money's worth in those moves because. It, they're not easy to break. And he could say with full sincerity that I did try and break at five, and he's still tangled up. Rosser still has to yep. get out. So he is getting more than five seconds every time he tangles Rosser up in the ropes. Just a brilliant game plan this far oh, by TJP. Man. TJP got here in no small part by defeating Mascara Dorado on the High Alert Tour. And he is no stranger to facing heavyweight athletes like Rosser. That's what's so exciting about this championship being open weight, is that you get these matchups that you might not normally get in New Japan. It's got Rosser frustrated right now, though, Alex. Yeah, I feel like TJP is a little bit in the head of Fred Rosser here. And, and you see that resorting to physically picking him up and moving him instead of trying to out-wrestle or strike, as we're seeing now with these forearms driving through the jaw. Headbutt. Irish whip in the corner. Oh, man, there's that power that came to his benefit in this situation. TJP flipping over that corner to the outside. It's going to be that physicality that Fred Rosser needs. And that intensity, I think the intensity, if, if he can keep TJP out of his head and keep the intensity up, it's a delicate balance. I think Rosser has a shot to retain here as he brings TJP back in. 
I think that he should also be conscious of his energy, conserve his energy when you're in there with a guy like TJP. Oh, watch it. Oh, my God. One arm hammerlock, the other snap down. That was rough. Absolutely wicked maneuver by TJP. And, in, and with TJP, you will see things in matches. Like we said, a veteran of 20 years, you will see things in matches today that he has never done in, in matches previous. That's how much of a student of the game he is, but that's how talented he is as well and, and how confident in himself he is to pull something out in a championship match such as this. TJP here uh, with his knee on the back of Fred Rosser, pulling on the arms here, continuing to weaken the shoulders, stretching those ligaments. And I believe it looks like uh, that elbow, that arm, that uh, TJP snapped back. I think it's a little bit swollen. And Rosser trying to swing those legs out underneath to get a vertical base. He has one knee up and those powerful legs standing him up. And this is where the extra reps, those flies, those, whoa, that's where they come in to counter. But this is where the extra years in the ring and in the dojo come to fruition. That octopus stretch now locked in. And just planting the point of the elbow into the oblique, forcing Rosser down to one knee. Very difficult to breathe in this, in this position here. And with every, every move, he's got to move almost 200 pounds with him. Man, this is almost a perfect game plan so far from TJP. In this ring, this is TJP's ring. He's very smart. He knows what he's doing. And here's the confidence from TJP. If I was him, I'd dial it down a little bit. We'll see if this pays off because, I mean, this is also an attempt to get in the head, frustrate Fred Rosser even more, humiliate him if he can because, you know, that, that's one way to get Fred Rosser off his course. Sent Anybody, really. Sent on attempt, nobody home, forearm delivered. The wear and tear on both men, it should not be understated. Rosser, oh, TJP in a heap Ooh. of danger. That was close. On the apron to the eyes. TJP not beyond breaking the rules here. Not beyond, but I mean, he let go. He had a few seconds. The, ref, the referee told him to let go. He let go. Jeremy Marcus, one of the best in the game. Oh, but Rosser! Oh, no. Signature move by Fred Rosser. Dropping TJP on the most unforgiving part of the ring. A move instrumental in his victory over Filthy Tom Lawler in Philadelphia. One that helped change the course of that bout with the title on the line. Will it swing the pendulum back to Rosser here in his third defense? Right, Rosser here being hyped, hyped up by the crowd here in Hollywood. Oh, close line across the chest. Oh, and another. Trapping him between those lariats. Those massive arms of Fred Rosser. Oh, sending him down from the back. The whiplash that TJP must be feeling right now. Oh, wow. And this is now looking good for TJP. The hip attack in the corner. Driving the glutes. And it, oh. oh, the knee catches TJP. And with the ankle, Rosser. Oh, connects. Driving the air through TJP. Cover two. Great deep cover. Hooking the leg, shoulders. Clearly covered, but TJP still got a lot more to give here. Yeah, but TJP took a big shot. That, that uh, hip drop right over the stomach. Took all the air out of TJP. We see Rosser with his feet on the gas here. But TJP sends Rosser into the corner, back elbow. TJP catches him here. Wow. Signature. 
into the Saito suplex, like you said. That is a hallmark of the offense, the defense into offense that TJP produces. Well, that allowed him a little moment to recover. But he's breathing a bit hard. He took a lot of damage. Capacity crowd here at the Vermont Hollywood. The finale, the final match of the Fighting Spirit Unleashed Tour. Ian Riccoboni, Alex Kozlov on the call. We thank you so much for joining us here. Title in the balance. TJP Ross are on his shoulders. Waist lock here, back elbow, TJ B, oh. planet! And it's Rosser! All the way up! TJ on his feet, picks him up. With a counter. Oh, oh, Fireman's Carry blocked, sends him down. Has him up, Fred Rosser! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh! Man. Running! Spicoli driver! TJP, I don't know if this was uh, intentional, rolling out of the ring, evading a possible pin, but Fred Rosser is waiting to Hit. drops. Oh my! Hits the bullseye, and that one. is one of the reasons Rosser is the strong open weight champion. TJP, like oh. you said, we don't know. If it was intentional, if it was on instinct, it was a smart move to get out of the ring to avoid being pinned. But Ross are staying on top of him here. You don't often see champions drive through like that and fight in such an offensive manner. That's right, because that was a big risk off the apron. That's a lot of distance. If TJP was to move, that could have been an injury that TJP would have taken advantage of. Fred Rosser going to the top, a little bit unlike him. He's throwing everything. Ooh, shot to the midsection there. We don't often see Rosser go up top. It could be a huge mistake. TJ Peak, oh, capitalizes with a superplex. And that may have been a mistake here on Fred Rosser's part. TJ P, who had emptied the gas tank out earlier, which allowed Rosser to get back into the match. I think right now, though, both men, as we are well in, Past the 10 minute mark, approaching 15. Both men are starting to need to dig down in the, into that reserve gas tank. That's right, both of these men are in championship minutes of this championship match. Headbutt by Rosser, connecting on TJP. The straight right though, into the jaw and the neck. Rosser delivers one of his own. It's TJP. Ooh. Ooh, hard headbutt. Rosser not afraid to give up his own head if it means an advantage in this title bout. Shot to the midsection. Clubbing blow to the back. Irish whip maintains the wrist. TJP. Dragon sleeper caught, countered. Rosser, two. Just a two count there. Rosser charging in up and over. TJP out of the way. Front face lock. Tornado DDT catches Rosser. And TJP pointing to the top. And, and, and Alex, we know what this could mean. This is one of him championships. He's looking for the, oh, oh splash, nobody home. <laughs> Opening for Fred Rosser here, if he can find TJP in the center of the ring. Has him up. Oh, look at that. Whoa, what oh, a counter. Man. What a counter. He is probably the only man that can counter out of that position. The versatility, the knowledge of this game and is impressive. And he was smart enough to know that he couldn't quite hold that move and instead goes to a Border City stretch style move here. That's right, he switched it to a grounding submission here. And Fred Rosser is in the middle of that ring being stretched. Rosser's got a long way to go. Can he make it to that rope? Variation of the regal stretch. Rosser clawing and fighting for that bottom rope. And again, so smart, he knows when it's not quite going to get into the finish line. Oh, so, wait a minute. Oh, he tried something else. Instead, caught. And now the leg trapped. Oh, man, that's looking tight. Ooh, chicken wing STF from Rosser. That chicken wing style STF. And TJP is trapped. Those massive arms turning into a blood and oxygen choke on TJP, oh. but he gets to the ropes. Gets to the ropes out of that chicken wing STF. And 
Both men have hit each other with their best submission moves. Both men have hit each other or tried to hit each other with their best high impact moves. Rosser with TJP up. He goes over. Oh! He's going for her again. Oh, oh and this time, Fred Rosser, he is not moving. No signs of life from Rosser. Mama oh! splash! Mama splash! One, two, two new champions! Yeah! Oh, just a two count. Fred Rosser just kicked out out of the Mamba Splash, the move that TJP has won numerous matches, championships with that move. And if you're TJP, you gotta be frustrated. You gotta, you gotta wonder, what can you do? What else can you do? The perfect opportunity, a golden moment for TJP. Has him on his shoulders. Oh, and that could have been a mistake. Twisting right. It's oh. Rosser. Oh, oh, the double knees. Has him up. That sidewinder oh, no. plants him down. Cover two. Oh. oh. TJP kicks out of the movie. He beat Big Damo with. But oh, that, man, that he's got it in. The chicken wing has oh. the up, and that's it. Oh, man. Match. What a hard defense by Fred Rosser. And we think about no days off as a, a, maybe a workout lifestyle and athletic regimen. But to me, no days off means being strong enough mentally to absorb your opponent's finishing move and to catch him at his mental low where he thought he had won the match. Find that physical strength. You find that last extra rep you put in at the gym. To power through, hit your own finishing move, that sidewinder. And know that he might kick out of it, but that you gotta keep pushing through and persevering. That's what Fred Roth did here tonight. Even when you have absolutely nothing left, as a champion, as somebody on this level, you gotta try, you gotta keep moving, and that is exactly what Fred Roth did here and he was able to defeat TJP. And now I wonder who is next. Yes. Who is next for the people? Who is next for the people's champion? A man who represents literally everybody in this audience. A man who has stood up to the biggest and the strongest. Who went on a vision quest. To finally defeat the undefeatable Tom Wall to capture the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship. He made history in Philadelphia. His historic run continues here in Hollywood. Three defenses under his. All I saw was a chair. Wait, wait, is wait. that? The, I, I can't get a good look at him, but I think. Oh, yeah, that is. That's Chris. That's that, Chris Dickinson. Chris Dickinson is here. And it's shoving security down. Chris Dickinson attacking Fred Rosser from the crowd with a with a chair. And Dickinson, who's been nursing an injury since his gigantic bout against Tanahashi. And, and we wondered, we wondered who would step up. We wondered who'd be the next challenger. Well, that is one way to get the attention of the champion, to D demand the title shot. Dickinson on a, on a helpless Fred oh! Rosser. Buster plants the champion right on his head and standing over Rosser like a vulture over his prey. Chris Dickinson is back in New Japan strong. And what a mean streak in him. And as the matches are being signed for the Autumn Attack Tour, 
There is no doubt in my mind which match Dickinson wants to see in Las Vegas, Nevada. As New Japan Strong heads to Sam's Town. The Autumn Attack Tour starts next week. And fans, we hope to get a word with the champion Fred Rosser about not only his victory, but also this despicable action, this act of cowardice. Well, hold on a second, Chris hold Dickinson. on a second. I gotta say, I kinda like this newfound attitude of Chris Dickinson. I like this, I like this about him. I mean, look, this is one way to get the attention of the champion. Absolutely. By any means necessary. Absolutely abhorrent. Chris Dickinson's behavior. Just draping the title. Again, like a vulture, like a cowardly vulture standing over Fred Rosser. Fans, I think we know now who is issuing the next challenge. Man, I, I gotta say, I'm loving what I'm seeing. I mean, this is one way to get the attention of the champion. This is one way to demand a title shot. And what a sour note to end the Fighting Spirit Unleashed Tour. What should have been a celebration of either a new champion in TJP or a great defensive Fred Rosser. And with that man, Chris Dickinson, staking his claim to the contendership to the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship fans. Thank you for joining us this week on NJPWWorld.com. We will find out if Chris Dickinson will be in the mix for the Autumn Attack Tour for Alex Kozlov, Ami, and Rikabani. And I'm disappointed in what we've seen. Happy wrestling, everybody. We'll see you in Las Vegas.